Kerbal Space Program is a rocket building and spaceflight simulator in a solar system that is, at a glance, quite similar to our own. At least, if you ignore the absence of Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Some of the sizes are different, planets may be different colors, but overall the five planets and two dwarf planets in the game are pretty much equivalent to their real-world counterparts. The biggest standouts are that the Venus analog Eve has a bit of Saturn's moon Titan mixed in with both worlds having these large, non-water lakes, and that the Pluto analog Elu is basically just a massive version of Saturn's icy moon Enceladus rather than being anything like Pluto. Where KSP really diverges from real life, though, is with its moons. Starting on the tamer end, Eve in KSP has a moon, while Venus does not. This moon, Gilly, is a captured asteroid reminiscent of either of Mars's moons, Phobos and Deimos. Speaking of Mars, its KSP equivalent Duna has a massive moon called Ike, which is nothing like its moons in real life. Ike is large enough, 40% the radius of Duna, that if KSP had a more accurate orbital simulation we'd see Duna slightly wobble as Ike orbits it, due to their shared center of mass being noticeably off from Duna's center. However, this is nowhere near as dramatic as the binary orbit of Pluto and Charon, since those two are much farther apart, and Charon proportionally more massive. What really makes Duna Ike so similar to Pluto Charon is the mutual tidal locking. This means that due to the tidal forces between Duna and Ike, one side of each body is always facing the other, causing the planet or the moon to never appear to set in the sky of the other. The Earth equivalent in the game, Kerbin, has a moon creatively called the Mun, which is basically just the moon. Although in the scale of KSP, it's a bit larger and has a closer orbit. However, Kerbin has a second moon, unlike the Earth, called Minmus. At first glance, Minmus looks like it's made of ice. However, being so close to the sun, this would mean that it should have a tail, much like a comet, as that ice gets sublimated away by solar radiation. If you have the Breaking Ground DLC installed, which adds new robotic scanning arms and surface features to the game, you can scan rocks found in these flat areas, and learn that they are in fact salt flats, not ice, and that Minmus may have, in the past, possessed an ocean and atmosphere that got evaporated away, leaving behind these mineral deposits. The last planet in the solar system in KSP has most of the moons, and that is the Jupiter analog Jewel. Closest in we have Lath, which is very much unlike the closest moon of Jupiter, Io, considering it has liquid water and a breathable atmosphere. Io, on the other hand, is covered in sulfur and volcanoes. Lath may be somewhat inspired by Titan, much like Eve, except they went the full sci-fi route of a habitable world orbiting a gas giant like Avatar's Pandora or Europa in the Space Odyssey series. Next we have Val, which is basically just Jupiter's moon Europa, but just super blue and covered in ridges. Jewel's third moon, Tylo, is basically Jupiter's moon Ganymede, but with a different coat of paint. The reports from various scientific instruments in-game hint that Tylo has a subsurface ocean which fuels a magnetic field, much like Ganymede. Where Tylo and the two other moons of Jewel mentioned so far really deviate from reality is in their size. Titan and Ganymede are both really big moons. Both of them are a bit bigger than the planet Mercury. However, the Julian moons are on a completely different level. Lath is bigger than both Moho and Duna, and Tylo is literally the size of Kerbin. KSP resizes most of its planets down by 11 times to make it easier to explore its solar system. Taking that into account, Tylo is more than twice as large as a Ganymede analog should be. Moons aren't the only bodies that have been scaled up. The dwarf planets get this treatment as well. The Ceres analog Drace is about half the size of Moho, despite Ceres being one-fifth the size of Mercury in real life. And the Pluto analog Elu is bigger than the Mun, despite Pluto being smaller than the Moon. Speaking of Elu, it unfortunately has no moons in the game, despite Pluto having a number of moons in real life. Although at least we get an analog to Charon in the form of Ike. The last two moons of Jewel are Bop and Pole. Bop is just a big captured asteroid with no specific real world equivalent. Pole, on the other hand, is very strange. It's like a tiny spiked version of Io with a similar coloration to the closest moon of Jupiter despite being the farthest moon of Jewel. Overall, we see that KSP often makes planets or moons analogs to one or more real life bodies, often taking the orbital positioning of one but the appearance of another. 
like they did with Pole being a distant copy of Io, or Eve being a copy of Titan in the position of Venus, or Ike being a copy of Charon but orbiting Mars instead of Pluto. Across the board, the dwarf planets and moons are much larger than their real-life counterparts, which is probably a gameplay decision to make for more unique and varied places to visit. Okay, bye. Thank you.